this is a conflict view because maybe the scientist gets their money from the state or gets their money from the corporation that runs the nuclear power plant. And when they you know, do this research, they tell their boss, you know, we've discovered some radiation in the public. And the boss will say, don't construct that. Don't tell people about this. Um, a good example about this construction of risk, the United States conducted a lot of nuclear tests within the United States, but never announced them. This was throughout the 1950s and into the 1960s. There are hundreds of nuclear bombs exploded above ground and underground. Above ground and underground. The United States never warned people. So many, many occasions, radioactive iodide, radioactive cesium would drift across the United States, getting into people, and they get sick. But they would understand, and they would blame something else. Um, a social construction of risk can talk about false safety. The United States refuses to test the Pacific water right now for radiation from Fukushima. The United States refuses to test the Pacific water right now for radiation from Fukushima. The United States refuses to test the Pacific water right now for radiation from Fukushima in Japan. Why? It's not because they have data that says it's not a problem. They're refusing to get the data to see. So countries may never talk about these major problems. As I said, I meant to continue this idea of the United States. During the 1950s and 60s, um, the United States did not construct the nuclear bomb tests as a public thing. But the United States did tell the Kodak Corporation they would tell corporations that we're testing for nuclear radiation. This could destroy your film. So, so film was more important than human lives to people running the United States. They were concerned about the problems with film. I find that very, very disgusting. Uh, but many things have happened like that in U.S. history, where people distrust the state. They distrust corporations because they don't see that they are constructing risk accurately or with equal concern directly. People sit inside the office of a legislature trying to get them to listen. People attack a coal mining plant. People chain themselves to the fence of a nuclear plant. This is direct action. Bex feels that with this environmental class conflict, we move into a world of very localized and regional subpolitics. And we're also international levels of risk. There's no national proletariat to rise up. There's either an international level of risk or there are very small levels of risk within a country. Previous forms of politics are national based and institutional based, but now they're sub-political based and they're based on local activists in different regions against their own state, sometimes in alliance with local businesses, and on the international level instead of state direct. Nuclear power in, well, the world right now, nuclear power in Japan particularly, because it damages the poor and the rich alike, Beck says, it creates a new kind of politics, very different from the politics of class versus class. Beck is also interested in social construction. He analyzes how science, because it constructs these risks, is the source of conflict too. You have people working for corporations of state, and they have a particular view of science. And they tell you, you're not sick from radiation. You're not sick from cancer because of our chemicals. And here's the data. that you may belong to a citizen group, and your citizen group does a survey and finds different data. So data versus data. It's not science versus no science. It's science versus science. A lot of people will say it's science versus irrationality. But Beck says, no, it's two different versions of scientific methods constructing risk. And this makes, of course, the lack of legitimacy of existing institutions and more sub-political direct action becomes part of our lives. People spend less time on elections and more time on direct action and 
taking their case to Hyundai, taking their case directly to Samsung. They don't try to ask the state to regulate Samsung. They ask Samsung directly by shutting down their factory, by maybe sitting in the office of the CEO and not leaving. Direct action becomes a major force. Um, right now, there is lots of sub-politics around the Four River Regime. In Korea, the Four Rivers Project. Um, it's not constructed in the media, but there are many cases where people will chain themselves to the cranes and the building materials to stop the machines from destroying the river. And that's an example of sub-politics. I'll show some examples later. But nuclear accidents? What about cancer over a million people? There's no way. It's totally unmanageable. You, the state cannot help you. And it's unrationalizable. You can't predict it. Japan, five years ago, they said, well, if we do have a tsunami, it will never reach that level. You know, it'll never be a problem. But tsunami completely covers that area. The estimate was it's over at least 12 meters tall, the wave that hit the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. They were un it's unrationalizable, unpredictable, and they had di diesel backups at Fukushima, but those broke down too. And um, it was unpredictable, and it leads to catastrophic risks. And with catastrophic risks, it doesn't do any good to have institutions, because the institutions are the ones that create these risks. The Japanese government allowed those nuclear plants to be built on Earthquakes, fault lines, they allow those nuclear plants to be built in front of an area where tsunamis would come. It's their fault. It's the state's fault. So the state cannot be seen as a savior. So the state is delegitimated. And people don't trust larger institutions and move towards local subpolitics. The standards of risk assessment are foolish. Right now, in most countries of the world, the way that a chemical is put into the environment is like this. Um, in most countries, the business does its own research. So there's an organization of bias. A business might conduct research on genetically modified crops, for instance. Genetically modified crops, and they say there's no risk, and then the government gets the data. Says, okay, we'll let you introduce that. Um, it also occurs, you know, here's a carcinogenic chemical, but we find it's such a low rate, it doesn't matter. And the state will say, okay, we've done the research, that's good, we authorize that. But we live in a world with the singular risk assessment doesn't work. We live in a world right now with over 80,000 synthetic chemicals that we've invented in the 20th century. And these don't have an effect by themselves. These have an effect as a group. So you can authorize one chemical, and it really does have a small risk. You can authorize another chemical, and it really has a small risk. But, for instance, I think it's Aldane, and uh, if there are two versions of pesticides that used to be legal in the United States. They didn't know this. They authorized this, but later they found out these two put together, the risk is 500 times. So there's no system that really measures the real world. You construct it as a single item going into the world, and that has a limited risk. But once the real world is there, the risk is huge.